and then realize what he was doing. Mm. Yeah. How, how you feel about the um the feud between you know the alleged feud, not alleged, but alleged that Fat Joe stole money from him, from Big Pun? You know, anything well, about that's not even alleged. Um, me and Gongo Roach is real tight. He was the one that helped get um Liza her money back. Yeah, yeah. So man, guy, he got kind of watched him. He been on my show quite a few times. You know what I'm saying? Kind of right. we talk about hip hop stuff and managing and things of that nature. So we, he told me about it, and it wasn't allegedly about it. She got like close to two million dollars back. The wise fat Joe running around saying that. You know what I mean? That Yo, much, yeah. I'm gonna tell you something. Um, I don't know. Do you remember the guy that Fat Joe was in business with? The nigga named um Steve Spinner. And the, what type of business? What type of business? Uh, the, the sneaker business. Yeah, I remember that the sneaker store. Yeah, and you remember uh, Steve Spinner? He was in um in the, in the federal half, halfway halfway with me in Newton, New Jersey. Oh shit! Okay. So, so yeah, so Steve Spinner got like three, um, three almost four years in affairs. For the, in fact, Joe had the same charge, but guess how much time Fat Joe got? Nothing, right? Six months time Six, months, time. six wow. months, something like that. Steve Spinner showed me some papers. Uh oh. Yeah, so all that about ain't no legend. I seen it. It's allegedly for your show, but I seen the paperwork. So what's the paperwork saying? The paperwork saying that he pretty much gave us um Scott Spinner, Arthur Scott Spinner, because of um because of it was fraud. It was fraud and um like cooking the books was fraud and um money laundering. Okay. They were sell, they were selling the sneakers. They were, they were coming to the store through the front door. And they take the sneakers at the store through the back door and sell them. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Scott, Scott was telling me, he was telling me that um Joe was was hiding money from him. So that's why he went one day when Joe was in there, he went he allegedly went in there and emptied the whole sneaker store. And he sold them, he sold the whole truck roll sneakers, you know what I'm saying? Somebody else. So only way people the police would know about that is if Joe called the police on his partner. Then a whole federal case came out came after that. It's not allegedly that's what really happened. If you look at the, if you look at the, um, the, the um the 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 sentences they got, they both charged the same thing. But this guy Scott Spinner, see the Jewish dude from um Jersey, going from New Jersey. Okay. Scott got a whole lot of a whole lot more time than Joe did. Wow. You got to think about it. Joe got six months. I think it was like six months name than that. You pull up, you could Google it too, man. I, I was like, I, at first I didn't believe it. I'm like, nah, not Joseph Cartagena. <laughs> <laughs> not so when, Dick Dunn. When Cuban Link shared that paperwork, I think it was like last August or a couple Augusts yeah. ago, and they said it was fake. Was that the actual paperwork or was that yeah. something different? In- that was something different that happened for some OGs back in the day. OGs, of course, put, did some time for Fat Joe. Mm. And it was like we were talking about. Matter of fact, um, my who's my man? My man had my man had the guy on the phone one day, ten toes down TV, had the OG on the phone on um and was um had, had him on interview on the phone one one day last year when I first people first start circulating, you know, right? And the OG said, in fact, you did, did a couple of things, you know what I'm saying? But nobody want to believe him because once got time for the paperwork, it was hard to get in contact with him. But you know, when you in jail, it's hard. You know, that man might went to the hole or something. You know what I'm saying? We can't even say that he um he didn't come back with the paper because he didn't have it. He could have been in a hole, you know, especially down in them in, in, in prisons, man, in upstate New York. Right. You just ain't no joke, man. The boys be having knives like this long. <laughs> So why why does it seem like and I'm we just I'm just talking in general here I'm I don't yeah. want to point the fingers at anybody yeah. but like alleged Fat Joe alleged Fat Joe we heard the yeah. alleged situation with Snoop back in the day with him but it seemed like these are the figures in hip hop that are almost on the, the Mount Rushmore or the at the gates opening and closing doors for people they the ones hitting all the biggest shows and doing the biggest events and pretty prominent in hip hop now why why does it seem like snitching goes hand in hand with that. Man, or does it in your opinion? I don't want to. Uh, no, nah, man. Nah, nah, some of these dudes, man, like you said, like Fat Joe, like Snoop Dogg, they they they've been of other people rep so long. You know what I'm saying? That once a, once a, he get put to the 
put their feet. Them type of dudes that use the turn you quick. Because hmm. they, when you look like, like they said, like how you, Charlie Rockell, we have Fat Joe lived off Charlie Rockell D life. You know what I'm saying? Like how he lived off his reputation for all them years. Mm-hmm. Me and Charlie Rockell did, we talk often too. He tell me different stories and things of that nature. But how long um, Fat Joe lived off his reputation for all them years and kept him safe. You know what I mean? He kept him right. safe, basically. How the terror squad was, was Charlie Rockell them was a terror squad. Fat Joe was brung in just like when they formed the terror squad with Big Pun in them. They was just yeah. brung into the terror squad. Well, that, was, that was a street game. That was Charlie Rock and them thing. You know what I mean? Right. Charlie Rock LD. So Charlie Rock LD repping the rail. <laughs> yeah, we had him on too, man. Good dude. Um, he had a yeah, lot of stories. Funny. Funny. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Too funny, man. He yeah. told me a lot of stories, man. I had my chicken on my channel once, once or twice. You know what I'm saying? We first was um, promoting his YouTube channel, trying to bring our brother up there so he could promote him. Especially when you get, if I have like, maybe I have a couple hundred people in the chat or 340 people in the chat, come on up, bro. Shoot, shoot your um, shout your thing out, put it out there, and keep it moving, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I believe it's important. I believe it's important to my life people to, um, to prosper, bro, especially. And they've been from something like he been from losing his eye for a cause and then being booted out the whip. You yeah. think though, talk about that though. Talk about because some people will say, like, Fat Joe ain't tell you, you know, to go ahead and you know, defend his honor like that. He defended his honor and got his eye taken. Some people feel like Fat Joe don't owe him shit for that. That was the decision that Charlie Rock made to do for Fat Yo, Joe. But let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. Your boy right here, it's your man. It's like it's like your brother, you grew up together, right? Right. Absolutely. So if he did something like that for you in a situation like that, you don't have to tell me to do nothing. You're my brother. You Real know shit. what I'm saying? Just assassinate your character, talking down on you, doing your dirty, you know what I'm saying? Saying slick stuff to you. So once I go into attack mode, you go talking about, oh, you got you to gotta be free for a year before I can mess with you. Mm. But how is that? You know what I'm saying? Like he said, I lost the eye for you. And in fact, Joe, he was joking on a, on one of his podcasts, one of his um Instagram talking about the one eye guy. Yeah, what? Yeah, he's talking. About, he's like, I stopped messing with him because how he was because he because he was talking about he got stabbed over the, over G unit terror squad B. Nah, he got stabbed over a heroin debt. You know what I'm saying? Mm. In prison. I'm Ooh. like, yeah, Fat Joe said it, but he he wanna say his name. He called him the one eye guy. Something yeah. like that. Is that on? Is that on the live that he addressed Wack too? Was that the, all that at the same time? Not it was not that live. I think it was a couple of lives before that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Which, which, cause, um, cause it's got this other other um, podcast of the interview Cuba Link and Charlie Rock Heavy. You know what I'm saying about the Terror Squad stuff. Okay. So, so it, it's pretty like, pretty much like that. And I heard it. I was like, Yo, why would I? Like, even even if you mad at that dude and he's saying stuff that's real. Why would you go that as far as putting his personal personal business out there? So I'm like, he got stabbed or a heroin that even if that was the truth, which I don't believe that was the truth, because he said, yo, Fat Joe was screaming him out back in the day heavy. Yeah, he was. So, hey. Yeah, on songs and everything. I remember hearing, that's why I remember hearing his name on, on the songs back in the day. Yeah, facts. Yeah. Damn. So that's why when you hear stuff like that, you take people, other people say, with a grain of salt. The same thing like we don't like, like I listen to how the Haven and Jay Z, you know what I'm saying, how their situation went. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, this dude's like your brother. He get case, he got a case where he wasn't even around. He was in North Carolina somewhere doing this thing. He wasn't even Maryland no more. And he get caught up in a because he had a boy in a phone conversation, a boy was having with a bunch of the people talking about him. He get caught in a, in a federal indictment. I had to go to the feds for a case. You know what I'm saying? He, he took it to trial. Right before trial, and death, I guess he copped out, whatever, to the lowest bid they gave him. He, he did what he did. You know, he left it like that. Then JT starts to rap stuff like that. I'm like, yo, but how can you do it to a man that was like your brother? Your mother took his mother took that both to the hospital because that caught the same STD from from the same chick. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, this, yeah. not, not, this not nothing I'm just putting out. This something that he right. said himself. He put out there himself. So I, we can talk about it because it's real. That's 
it's a it's a lot. You see a lot of that going in the industry when they leave the, the right hand man behind when they start prospering. You know what I mean? Start, no, let's let's talk about that, man. Um, All right. You know the big pun. How you, how you feel about the whole situation? I used to had a story from Big Pun from ninety nine. Oh, um, ninety nine. Right. right. It's a, I don't know. I don't know if y'all old enough to remember this. It was a strip club called Queen of Hearts in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Back in the back in the nineties, late nineties, okay. early two thousands, real big, real big things. Like one of the biggest strip clubs in New Jersey, you know, in Elizabeth, brother. Um, so a lot of people used to come to that strip club. Right. One day, I was I, I was doing security, but I was doing security at that strip club. I was off, I was just chilling. I like, yo, I'm going. I said, work, I'm going to go chill. So my brother was like, oh yo, let's go to Queen of Hearts or whatever. So we went. I was, at first, I didn't want to go. He's like, oh, bring, bring the girl real, bring my girl, we're going to Queen of Hearts. And I'm like, bro, I'm not um, bringing my girl to no strip club. He's like, we're bringing our girls. So I was like, I like, because cause his girl worked there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My older brother, right? We were laughing about it. So I, I did it, man. When he gets my best judgment. And we was there for a minute, like chilling. And this was Big Pong. Was just, he, was, he was hot, but he was really hot, hot yet. You know what I'm saying? He was still be able, able to be seen in public. He was, with, he was with a few other cats. He was sitting at the, the bar. We sitting at the table on the side. He's sitting right at the bar. And my, my brother was like, yo, ain't that, that nigga, ain't that nigga, that nigga Big Pun over there? I'm like, I don't know, man. I, at the time, like I said, I wasn't really into like Bronx rappers like that. You know what I'm saying? Had a few I, I rock with, but I was with, shit, on the Digging That Craze Crew, Master Eight. No, I mean, Digging That Craze Crew, what's his name? Um, Showbiz AG and them. I like them, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But like a lot of Bronx Bronx rappers, I like. So I wasn't really big on him yet. I wasn't feeling him yet. I was right. on my biggie. I was on my biggie wave at the time. You dig know what I'm saying? Yes, uh-huh. sir. Yes, sir. So um, he's he like, "Yo, let me holler at you for a minute." It was, it was big pun. He's like, "Let me holler at you for a minute. What's up, bro?" Right. He's like, "Um, yo, how much was?" He's like, "That's your girl right there." And I'm like, "Yes, yeah, my." I'm like, "Yes, yeah, my girl. What's up?" Oh, like, you know what I'm saying? He's like, "Nah, I just want to buy, buy buy some time for my." Mm. I looked at the nigga, right? <laughs> and he, he had a lot of money in his so I put the money in my pocket and I threw it in his face. So a whole bra broke out of the bar. I told my, we told our girl, I told my girl, I like, go get the car. I told before I went over there, go get the car. I was like, we was like, set it off, you know what I'm saying? Go get the car. So they, they was leaving, I going to get the car when the shit broke down. And, and all went down. Bad. My man got, my man caught a shooting case that, that day too. Hey. He's home now. Put a shooting case at the end of the club. From that situation? From that situation. Yeah. What happened with that if your mommy asked? Him? Oh, he, um, he did eight years. Hmm. Never mentioned, he never mentioned nobody's name that. My name, nobody's name that, that started the fight or nothing. He got caught, he got caught shooting in the club through the cameras. You know what I'm saying? A regular fight, but it's a regular fight, but it was, it was crazy, man. So at that time, I didn't like Big Pun no more. I was young. I was cocky. Mm-hmm. I, was like, I, thought this, I don't give a about that nigga. But then over the years, I start seeing like his, like was listen to his son talk about him. People talk about. I start seeing the demons he had at that time. Yeah. So it probably wasn't him trying to disrespect me. It was just that he probably was high off his head 